Hello class and welcome to Early Human Lecture Notes. The earliest era of human life is often known as the Stone Age. It's called the Stone Age because this was the era of human life where humans began using stone tools. So things like arrowheads and axes and things that you would be able to use stones uh, to make the tools. There are later ages that are named on technology. Uh, the next one is the Bronze Age, which is then followed by the Iron Age. These eras were named this because it indicated that human society had been growing technologically uh, from stone to bronze to eventually iron and so on. Uh, but also this era is named this way because human society was becoming more complex. Uh, and that's according to the historians who use these naming systems of Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age. Uh, the Stone Age is divided up into two parts. The first part is known as the Paleolithic Era which is no, also known as the Old Stone Age. And this period began around 2.5 million years ago and lasted until about 9600 BCE. This is the longest part of the Stone Age. The Paleolithic era is the longest period of the Stone Age. Uh, and it ended around the time of the last Ice Age ending. The second half of the Stone Age is known as the Neolithic Era, or the New Stone Age. And this is from around 8000 BCE until 4000 BCE. We're going to start by looking at the Paleolithic Era. We mainly understand the history of the Paleolithic Era due to the evidence that was left behind, such as fossilized human remains and stone tools. This is before writing was invented, so there wasn't any written documents that historians can use to discover what happened during this period. So around 40,000 years ago, we begin to see the first recorded expressions of artistic life, such as personal ornaments on recovered fossilized humans or cave paintings, uh, which we have some pictures of later in the lecture. Uh, during this period, period, humans originated in Africa and then began migrating around the world. The Ice Age allowed humans to move between continents due to lower sea levels. So when there's more ice around the world, it's taking that water out of the oceans, bringing down sea levels. And so, for example, humans were able to cross between Asia and North America across the Bering Straits. So during the Paleolithic Age, Humans were living in small groups, maybe 20 to 30 or so. And most of life was spent hunting and gathering food. They lived as nomads. So everyone's job was to make sure there was enough food to keep the group alive. Uh, foragers, these are people who search for food. Uh, there were some more flexible gender roles in foraging. Uh, everyone was involved. You had to help the group make sure they had enough food to eat uh, so that you didn't starve to death. And so... This was more based on independent skills and less based on gender, which will change once we have civilization starting to form up. Uh, during this period, humans created tools to help them hunt and work, and people lived in a naturally protected location, such as overhangs uh, and caves. In the picture over to the right, you'll see some images of the Mesa Verde site, which is a located in Colorado, and it's an early human settlements uh, a bit later on than the Paleolithic era, but it gives you the idea of what we're talking about, civilizations forming under overhangs. You can see how the, the land hangs over where the settlement was built. So for hundreds of thousands of years, two and a half million years almost, uh, people lived about the same way, hunting, gathering, nomadic lifestyle. Uh, but the Neolithic era was a time when all of that changed. The Paleolithic era ended with the invention of farming, which occurred at different times around the world, somewhere between 9600 BCE and 6000 BCE. Because farming began at different times around the world, there's not a specific end date for this period of time. But by 8000 BCE, farming was pretty widespread around the world. Uh, the invention of farming is also known as the Agricultural Revolution, or sometimes it's also called the Neolithic Revolution. And some historians argue that this change was revolutionary. It was a big, drastic switch from what had happened before, uh, a sudden change. Uh, others argue that this change was more gradual and that these sudden changes are more exaggerated these historians are probably a little more accurate. The agricultural revolution did happen slowly over time, but it did result in major changes to how people lived. 
It changed the way that human society is organized. Uh, instead of having small groups, groups started to get larger and larger and larger and stratified. Uh, it changed how humans use the earth. Instead of wandering around foraging and hunting, uh, people started to change the earth to suit them, including f clearing out forests or uh, growing root crops and other cultivation. Uh, it resulted in new technologies for farming and herding, such as plows and irrigation systems, which drastically changed the earth. And it provided more food. And when there's more food, that means the population can grow larger. People aren't starving to death. People aren't hungry. They're able to have larger families. And so population is going to get much larger because of the agricultural revolution. And as the population density of villages increased, this gradually would mean that these villages would evolve into towns and then cities and later small city states and empires. So farming began as humans started picking plants that were abundant and they were providing energy that helped humanity survive and thrive. They picked plants such as wheat, barley, rice, and other kind of things like that. And through this process, they slowly began to domesticate the plants so that they weren't just gr growing wild. They were able to plant them and uh, cultivate them at very specific times. This is known as systematic agriculture. Humans also began to domesticate animals during this period. They would pick animals that they could use, such as work animals like horses or livestock that they could use as food, such as cows or chickens or pigs. They picked animals that could provide things for them like leather, wool, hides. And all these animals also provided fertilizer to help them uh, grow their, their plants. During this period, they still hunted food as well, uh, but people still hunt today, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's their primary means of finding food to eat. Uh, so this stable and abundant food supply led to big changes for society. People began to settle in specific areas rather than living a nomadic life. So archaeologists and anthropologists are studying the remains of these early civilizations. Like I said, there is no written record because writing hadn't been invented yet. And so they have to use these archaeological sites to try and figure out what life was like. One example of this is the picture on this slide of the 7000 BCE settlement of Çetelhöyük. This is in modern day Turkey, and they potentially had 10,000 people living in this Neolithic era city. That's a large population for this time period. And so archaeologists and anthropologists are studying the remains there, the buildings, the tools, and the people that were left behind by that civilization. The Neolithic era led to big changes in how people lived. As people settled, they were able to get more stable food which allowed populations to grow and become more densely packed. Instead of groups of 20 to 30 wandering around the world, you could have groups of tens and hundreds and thousands and perhaps even 10,000 uh, living in one area. Additional population and sedentary lifestyle, uh, sedentary means uh, not moving around as much, more stationary, uh, meant that people would need to work together in larger groups. You no longer were just connected to the 20 people uh, who were in your traveling nomadic group, you now were working with hundreds of people. Larger populations also meant that not every person needed to farm or forage. During the Paleolithic era, most people had to work on finding food. They had to look for food, and that was one of their main jobs. Uh, still, most people were farmers during the Neolithic era, and up until modern times, many farmers, up until the last couple hundred years, most people have been farmers. But not everyone did during the Neolithic period. And this led to job specialization. People could focus on one specific job, which then led to technological advances, such as bronze tools. Uh, it also led to people having jobs such as artists and merchants. And so trade and art began to form during this period. Another result of the agricultural revolution was social stratification. Uh, stratification means layers. And so during the agricultural revolution, during the Neolithic era, society started to divide into different class groups. Uh, this is called social hierarchy. So you have some people at the top, uh, some people in the middle, some people at the bottom, different social classes. 
Uh, rulers were able to gain power, which led to the development of things like monarchies, where rulers were chosen because their parents were rulers. And it was passed down usually from father to son, uh, which is another example of things that changed uh, in the invention of patriarchy, the rule by males, where it would be a king would pass it on to his son who would become king and then pass it on to their son who would become king. And these two things work together in this idea of social classes. So a king or other high ranking leaders would be at the top of the social class order. Uh, and then you'd have people in the middle and then the lowest classes at the bottom. During this period, militaries also formed to help protect territory, but also to expand territory. You also had the development of religious institutions and religious customs. Uh, this is also a period where shrines began to be built and temples. For example, on the right, there's an image of a ziggurat, which is a giant temple that we're going to learn about in the next chapter on ancient Mesopotamia. So all these things led to drastic changes for the way people were living. And with those changes, there comes good things and bad things. Some of the benefits that came from the agricultural revolution is that farming provided consistent food supplies. You weren't foraging anymore to find food and hoping that you found enough to have your group survive on. When you're farming, you have a general idea of how much food you're going to be able to harvest based on how much you plant and how the season is going. Better shelters were also a benefit of the Neolithic era. Because people weren't nomadic anymore, they didn't have to create shelters that could be taken down and travel with them to wherever they were moving to. Instead, they could use uh, materials that were more permanent, and this kept people better protected from the elements. In addition, more abundant food meant the populations were able to grow and more people were available to do things that weren't just farming and finding food. And so this led to collaboration and advances in technology. It also led to specialization. Uh, so specialization meant that people could focus on one specific skill, which led to an advance in trade, crafts, art, and technology as well. While the agricultural revolution led to some benefits for society, it also led to some consequences that maybe weren't as good for society. One example of this is the emergence of social classes. Uh, this meant that there were some people who would rise to the top, gain power and influence, while other people lowered and fell to the bottom. In this class, we'll discuss social class in a number of these societies that we'll be looking at, and we'll see how some people rise to the top and other situations formed where people were brought down or were discriminated or made as outcasts to society. You also saw a competition for resources develop. As societies grew and became closer to each other, uh, the limited number of resources led to competition and conflict. And so you see the emergence of militaries and wars and empires trying to conquer each other. You also see because people are living in close proximity to each other, a disease increasing. Some of this is because of the domesticated animals. And so diseases are being transmitted from animals to people. Some of this is because of a lack of sanitation. Uh, but also there was a less active lifestyle, which led to a decline in the health of people during the Neolithic era. And finally, due to the emergence of social classes, uh, systems such as patriarchy and religious traditions, we also see gender inequality starting to emerge in some societies where women are treated differently than the men in their society. And so as people start to settle, we see the emergence of what some people call civilization. Uh, out of these changes, civilization begins to emerge. And those studying civilizations look for some common features to indicate that a civilization has developed. One of these elements is government. Has a government formed? Uh, during a nomadic lifestyle, there's less of a need for a complex government because it's a small group and people can more easily work together. But as the groups got bigger and society starts stratifying into different classes, governments emerge. Uh, we also look for civilizations that have cities. So cities are one of the th markers that there is a civilization. People are no longer just wandering back and forth. Uh, while this can be a problematic thing, the idea of civilizations, because uh, nomadic people can have a civilization as well. Uh, this is one thing what we're talking about uh, that people look for when they're discussing civilizations. 
Uh, they also look for specialized workers, workers doing a specific job. Uh, institutions are one of the markers for civilization. These are things uh, such as uh, organized religions or governments or uh, bureaucracies within a society. Writing is a key part of civilization so that uh, history can be recorded uh, and information passed down. Another indication of civilization is that a culture has developed. We're going to be looking at a number of different cultures that develop around the world as we go through this course. Uh, another marker is infrastructure. Things like roads, aqueducts, uh, harbors, things that help uh, societies move people and products back and forth. And then finally, social classes are a marker of civilization. While all civilizations may not have every single one of these things in the same way, these are the things that people look for when they're trying to determine if there is a civilization that has developed. And as I said, there are some issues with this idea of civilization because uh, many civilizations with cultures and writings and social class exist that don't have uh, civilization in the way we think of it in the Western world. Thank you for joining me on Notes for Early Human Society. Uh, for more information, you can look through your book in the chapter on early humans. Or another good resource online is www.ancient.eu.